Now, many of you have been to events where the MC says, this guy needs no introduction, and then is followed by a long introduction. Well, today, this guy truly needs no introduction. I'm going to ask Bob Simon to join me up here on stage. The singular thing that separates us from all other hometowns in the world, we have Bob. Yay! We have our father. Reston is probably the only place I know that is of this size that is connected with one person. The concept of Reston and the idea of community and the way that we now enjoy community in Reston was what Bob was all about when he, when he started Reston. I'm fine, thanks. How yeah, about it's you? My name. Nice meeting you. Oh, I like that. Is that really your name? That's my name, yeah. Well, I have a friend whose name is Ha. Oh, my God. I say, hi, Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your name? Bob. Bob? You like for people to call you Bob? That's what I like. Okay. Okay, you ready? Smile. Cheese. As the founder, People let me shoot my mouth off, and occasionally I get a good idea. And I think that's important because sometimes a good idea gets acted upon. So I feel it's worthwhile for the community to put up with me, and I enjoy the relationship. Well, we're going to the task force and the task force has been meeting monthly for about three years. Patience is what it's all about. To the, the task force was appointed to work with staff to develop um, or to evaluate the current comprehensive plan. Yeah, uh, Heidi, I think this is all premature. H how can you have any of this without discussing the village centers? We can't use the term comprehensive plan for Reston without having the village centers in it. I understand where you're coming from, Bob, in terms of it would be nice if we could be saying we're talking about the comprehensive plan for the whole community of Reston, but for the well, moment well, we're well, talking well, about the transit station. Well, you're, 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 you're eloquent. You didn't sell me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll shut up. <laughs> When it's Robert E. Simon town, you have the right and the responsibility to tell everybody when they're wrong. And Bob has never been shy about doing that. It's the irascible fella who's always going to tell us that we're off the track and we ought to get back on the track. Hello, Bob. How are you? I'm healthy. Good. Thank you. How about you? Where, where is the meeting? In room one. Bob comes to the community center or goes to Reston Association and says, this community needs X, Y, or Z. And then those of us who are involved in answering that question say, okay, we've got to work on this problem and figure out how to solve it. Um, so for this summer, we are offering 110 specific camp opportunities. And the average kid now spends six and a half hours, seven days a week, exercising his thumbs on his high-tech stuff. We're struggling to get them out of the house. What would be the ideal? Would be for kids to be active, doing things that they enjoy and de develop them for their future. It's part of the whole thing of working for a good community. 
you should wake up in the morning and go outside and be able to swim or row a canoe on a lake and rest in and troop off to the Grace Gallery and learn how to do a painting and then go off in the woods for a while. And finally, after about nine, 10 hours of all this, you should be dropped, exhausted, replenished, and start over the next day. This is his mission, that this will be the summer experience of every kid in Reston. And he doesn't want it to just stop with summer vacation. His idea is that all day, every day, kids need to be in happy, adventurous kinds of settings and activities. Bob's Endless Summer. Well, this knocks me out. See all of you kids here. I hope you have a good time. And now I'm going to say the faithful words. Are you ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. Hey, Bob. Hey. Can I get a picture of you and the kids? Congratulations, kids. He's at everything. You see him all the time. He is there. He is ever present. He is having a chance to touch, actually touch the lives of, of people, several generations of people. Hi, Mr. Simons. This is Nicholas. Nicholas. Hi, Hi Nicholas. We spoke on the phone. I feel like every time I see Bob Simon, I'm, maybe I'm starstruck a little bit. Like, there he is. He's just like a, you know, an arm's length away. I think, wow, this is the guy, the guy who, who founded Reston. I'm literally thrilled by the color of your hair because I'm so used to gatherings in Reston where it's either bald or gray. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have blonde and black and, well, whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> We are very fortunate that you are involved and are anxious to be even more involved. It was important for us to talk to Bob Simon because he had a vision and we wanted to hear it from him. You know, Bob Simon was an extraordinary figure. He was a commercial developer who had social aims. We don't see that very much, actually. As the physical arrangement of Reston prefigured the whole movement much later toward making suburban communities denser, so also did his belief in it being an open community prefigure the whole movement toward diversity in community that we now consider key, really. Jaywalk. All right. I know. That's a cop, Bob. You're walking in front of there. <clears throat> Bob grew up in an apartment that was in New York City, but it was across the street from a park, a very large park next to the river. It was beautiful. And there nature, trees. We loved our open spaces. Living here, right next to Riverside Drive Park and a couple of blocks away from Central Park, I grew up thinking this is the way to live. You just can't have a whole life without something to do with nature. Isn't this beautiful? Very good to see you. Well, thank you so good much morning. for let, letting us come in. Do you remember the pocket doors? Yes. Came in between? Yes, I sure do. So this was the... Oh, yes, of course. Do you remember this? Sure. Now, Cheryl, that's what I call a bathtub. Yeah, exactly. A little swimming pool, right? 
when I was, I don't know, six or so, yeah. uh, my father had me uh, turn the hot water on or off or whatever, and I was his engineer. Well, this is the same. It's the same one exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this was, this was this your parents' room? Yeah. Here? I'll show you this first, and then we can come on and I'll show you your room. When the sun set, yes. we very often would all six of us assemble and and watch it. Yes, we were quite a family. We didn't really have religion in my house. We didn't have dinner parties or go to dinner parties. Anti-Semitism was such that I was excluded from a Boy Scout patrol because this was strictly Christian. We were put into Christian science school. My mother, I guess, thought that that would be a good hiding place. My mother was a culture vulture, and she felt it her obligation to see that none of the seats for Box 23 in Carnegie Hall were ever empty. We traveled a lot. We went on the grand tours, what they called it, 15 months in Europe. When I graduated from college, I spent two months on a bicycle riding all over Europe and found that's the only way to travel because you meet so many people. I was made president of Carnegie Hall, age 23. This was quite a responsibility. On the very popular events there, they often put seats on the stage with the performer. So I was up there when Rachmaninoff was playing the piano. And I wasn't too far from him. Reston is what it is because Bob Simon sold Carnegie Hall. I think the fact that Bob had the history, the personal history he has, and that he is a pianist and loves music and has always enjoyed the theater and has always cherished the surprise and playfulness of public art and the willingness to demand it, not to hope for it, not to say, well, eventually people will make it happen, but to say art and beauty are necessities and they belong in everybody's life. Any development should have its functional facets, but it also should have a fun, beauty, fantasy. There was a concrete boat, and a good many adults didn't know what it was, but all the kids knew just what it was. It was a boat. One time, we heard kids who were in the boat hollering bloody murder, and I went up to them and I said, what's the matter? One of the kids said, sharks. Well, this was an apotheosis for me. This was what it was all about. Near the boat is a stairway that goes no place. There's many a young couple who, having climbed the stair, got a little serious about their future. And I love the, the sight of that as I come out of Heron House and turn around and uh, uh, see the embrace. The thing is, I've watched that since it wasn't, 
and then it started to be little green berries, and then uh, it starts up here, and gradually it gets purple, and in the last week it reached the tip. It's been so much fun following it. Uh, birds love to come here. You can see them coming now. I think it's uh, their Coney Island. Uh, uh, they get a ride and a snack. And I always stop here in the morning to see them. You see that now? That guy up on the top is having a ball. Good morning. Hi. It's the regulars that I meet and just warm greetings and some hugs and off we go. Hi. A little swing? A little swing. Swing, swing time. <laughs> This is Mr. Reston right here. <laughs> Beautiful. If you try to define happiness, what, what's happiness? A million dollars. No, no. A billion dollars. A thousand times as much happiness? Absolutely not. It's the interaction of people, that is what it's all about. Uh, the American Institute of Certified Planners is proud to add Reston and Robert Simon to its roster of National Historic Planning Landmarks and Pioneers. The new town of Reston will join other great historic planning landmarks, such as Radburn, New Jersey, the Greenbelt Towns, and the Plan of Savannah, Georgia. Robert Simon is now recognized by AICP, along with planning pioneers such as Frederick Law Homestead, Benton Mackay, and Pierre Lafont who have been named by the American Institute of Certified Planners previously. How does it feel to be 99? Well, from the waist up, I feel like I'm 60. From the waist down, I'm 125. <laughs> I'm optimistic about the future. I think people still think they've got something here and they want it to stay that way. It's such a thrill just to look around and see so many friends. There are no strangers here. This is a real community and there's no strangers. So. There is a song, you'll be happy to know I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> I could, <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> and the song is warm all over. And that's how I feel. This loving, warm atmosphere, never forget it. Thank you all for being.
is what it's all about.